hi, and welcome to our very first economics video. So the phrase in economics that pretty much sums up all of what economics is about. There is no such thing as a free lunch. Now as I say that, some of you may actually question the truthfulness of that statement that there's no such thing as a free lunch because some of you may even get a free lunch at school every day. What I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about why that lunch really isn't free because everything has a cost no matter what it is. Now what do I mean by that? Well in economics a cost is a little bit different than how you normally use the word cost. Let's think about a decision that you might make over the next few months, and that is to go to college. Um, how much will college cost you? Well, it depends on where you're going to go, but most likely you'll probably have some similar costs no matter where you go. You'll have housing, tuition, food, books. All those things are a part of the cost of going to college. That's why so many people have to get, take out student loans because the costs can get pretty high. But what if you chose not to go to college? What would your other option be? Your other option might be to work. You might decide, you know what, I don't want to go to college, I'm just going to go straight into the workforce. Well, are there costs associated with going to work? Well, there are some. There may be transportation costs, you have to get to work. Training costs sometimes, there are certain trainings you need to get done. And some works even require you to pay for your own uniform. But really, when I talk about costs, I'm not talking about either of those kinds of costs for college or for work. Cost is more about what you're giving up. Now, if you choose to go to college, that means you're choosing not to go to work full time. And so, if you had gone to work, if you had chosen to go to work, let's say that you could have earned, oh, maybe $25,000, okay, a year, if you chose to go to work. So when you choose to go to college, the costs are not just the housing, the tuition, the food, and, the, um, and your books. The cost is the loss of the $25,000 of income that you would have earned had you gone to work. So it costs you in lost income $25,000 a year to go to college. What if you choose to go to work then? Well, if you choose to go to work, you're giving up going to college. And we all know, or I hope you know this, that the average person makes over a million dollars more over the course of their lifetime um, if they go to college versus just graduate from high school. So that is a big, a big difference, isn't it? And so if you choose just to go to work and not go to college, you may be giving up over a million dollars. So that might be the cost of going to work. So the cost is not just the upfront payment, but what you're giving up. And this is called opportunity cost. The opportunity cost is the next best alternative that you give up when you make a decision. Now here's an example. <coughs> Here's the deal. I will make you a potion that will turn you into a human for three days. Got that? Three days. Now listen, this is important. Before the sun sets on the third day, you've got to get dear old Princey to fall in love with you. That is, he's got to kiss you. Not just any kiss. The kiss of true love. If he does kiss you before the sun sets on the third day, you'll remain human permanently. But if he doesn't, you turn back into a mermaid and you belong to me. <laughs> Have we got a deal? If I become human, I'll never be with my father or sisters again. That's right. But you'll have
Okay. So in that little clip, Ariel has a choice to make. She can either stay human or she, I mean, she can become human or she can stay a mermaid. If she chooses to stay, to stay a mermaid, she gives up Prince Eric. If she chooses to become a human, she gives up her friends and her family to be a mermaid. And so that is, this is what opportunity cost is. Because the upfront cost is her voice. That's what Ursula is charging her for the transformation. But the opportunity cost is what she's giving up. And if she chooses to become human, she gives up, again, her friends, her family, and life in the ocean. So now that we can see that every time we face a choice, or we make a choice, we face an opportunity cost, Let's kind of stay, take a step back and figure out why is it that we have to make the choices at all? Why can't we have it all, as the phrase says? Well, I know that when you ask your parents why you can't have it all, they tell you because they don't have enough money. But it's not just about money. Why is it, for example, that we can't all have beachfront property? Why can't everyone in the world who wants beachfront property have it? Well, Probably you figured out pretty quickly we can't because there's just not enough beachfront property out there. There's a limited amount. It is what we call scarce. And, ac and actually, we can say that all resources are scarce. Now in economics, we call resources factors of production. That's a term we use for them. Because resources are the things that we use to produce other things. And there are four types of resources. The first one is land. Now land doesn't just refer to the ground under our feet, it refers to things like trees, cotton, water, iron ore, chickens, cows, peppers, potatoes, anything grown from Mother Nature is included under land. So let's say, for example, we, were, we wanted to um, create a t-shirt. Well, what kind of land might we need for a t-shirt? Well, we'd probably need some cotton. And so that's one resource that would go into making that product. The second resource we'd need is some sort of labor. Now, if we were making a t-shirt, we wouldn't need a doctor, but a doctor is a form of labor. But we might need a seamstress, wouldn't we? We also might need a designer. But labor also includes welders, cowgirls, and even singers are all forms of labor. The next resource we need is that of capital. Now capital is man-made goods used to make final goods and services. So these are things that perhaps you don't buy as a final good or service, but you use to make a final good or service. Like a tractor that's used to bring in the wheat. Or in our t-shirt example, perhaps the sewing machine used to make the t-shirt. It could be factories. It could be a brick oven at a pizzeria. It could be a semi-truck that's used to deliver our product to the store. All these things are man-made items that help us to deliver that final good and service. The last thing we need is an entrepreneur. Now entrepreneurs um, are those people who take are risk takers. They're the ones who take the resources we just talked about, land, labor, and capital, they bring it together in a new way, and they take the risk in creating a new product. Now entrepreneurs can be someone famous like Russell Simmons or Oprah or Donald Trump. But it also could just be an average person who opens a business, who opens a store um, and hires workers and um, delivers some sort of product. Now once we have these resources or these factors of production, then we can create goods or, and services. But the thing is, is that land, labor, and cap capital and entrepreneurship are all limited resources. They're all things that are what we call scarce. Now the term scarcity refers to having limited quantities of resources to meet unlimited wants. Um, all those things, even something like, you know, going back to our resources, something like land, like water. Even something water that seems so abundant on the earth is, there's a limited amount, there's only so much out there. And because we have a limited amount of each of these items, we have to make decisions. We have to decide how we're going to use them. Are we going to use our resources to um, strengthen our military? make guns, uniforms, tanks? Are we gonna use them to build more schools and buy textbooks? Are we gonna use them to build roads and bridges? We can't do everything because we only have so many resources. 
we only have so many workers and so many other of the other resources. So we have to make decisions. Now remember, scarcity though is different than what we call a shortage. A shortage is a situation in which a good or service is actually unattainable. You can't find it. You can't get it. Um, that might be because of a natural disaster or um, something's happened to stop the production. But shortages are eventually resolved. Scarcity always exists because everything is always limited. Okay, so make sure you understand the difference between those two terms because you will be tested on that. This leads us to a very important term in economics, and that is the term of scarcity. Now, scarcity is when we have limited quantities of resources to meet our unlimited wants. The truth is we all have unlimited, we have unlimited wants. We always want something, right? If I gave you $5 and said, go out and buy something, you go out and buy something, and then you'd want another $5 if I would give it to you, and another $5. But you know, there's always more things that we want every day, um, there's more things that we want, and that's just the human condition for us to want more things. But yet, we have limited quantities of resources out there, and we have to make choices. So the scarcity, the fact that everything is limited, um, is what causes us to make choices and gives us that opportunity cost. Now again, scarcity always exists. Everything is scarce. Even something like water, which you think of being so plentiful, there's still a limited amount of it on the earth. Now that's different from a shortage. A shortage is a situation when a good or service is unattainable, can't be found, or uh, there's a disruption in the supply line. So for example, we have a hurricane and it you know, destroys some of the oil pipelines, so we have a shortage of, of gasoline. It's not because there isn't gasoline out there. It's, not, uh, it's just that we can't get to it right now because you know, there's been a natural disaster. Um, shortages are usually resolved over time. You know, either they can fix the pipelines or sometimes the price will go up and less people will demand the product and the shortage is resolved that way. But I just want you to remember that scarcity, everything is scarce all the time. Okay, But a shortage is something that exists temporarily. So make sure you know those differences because that will be on the test. Okay. So finally, to apply this knowledge, I want you to think about the opportunity cost in your life. What are some decisions you made just this past weekend or in the last week? Um, things you had to choose between. Maybe you could go to movie, the movies with a friend or you could stay home and watch your little brother or sister. You could um, get up and go to work or you could stay home and sleep in. These are all decisions that we're making every day and each time there's something we're giving up and there's an opportunity cost. Even something as simple as going to lunch. You know, maybe today I wanna to go to lunch and I think, well, maybe I wanna to go to, let's see, Taco Bueno or, what else would be good? Whataburger, okay? Taco Bueno or Whataburger. Once I make the decision to go to Taco Bueno, my opportunity cost is a Whataburger that I can't have anymore. Okay. If I choose to go to Whataburger, the opportunity cost is Taco Bueno. It's the opportunity cost is what you give up. So I want you to think about um, you know, a couple decisions you've made recently and what your opportunity cost was, each, was for each one. Now this understanding opportunity cost in that way, maybe it isn't important for every little decision, but it does get important when it starts coming into um, bigger decisions, like the going to college or working. Um, realizing that when you choose not to go to college that you're giving up, you know, millions of a million dollars over the course of your lifetime, suddenly, you know, the cost seems a little bit high to go to work, doesn't it? Um, and that can work for, for a lot of things. You know, maybe IHOP has free pancake day. Okay, and you think, oh, you know, that's great, free pancakes. But remember, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So you go down to IHOP and there's a two hour wait for the free pancakes. Are the pancakes really free at that point? You have to wait two hours for it. And so suddenly our decisions start taking on a different level of meaning when we realize that there are opportunity costs involved.